Hello everyone, I am the Lore Explorer and we are back with the Outer Wilds. It's a handcrafted open star system that focuses on the ancient Nomai. And as the last episode revealed an even further mystery surrounding our sun. After a while exploring the planet, the sun caves in on itself and goes supernova, destroying everything. Yet for some reason, we feel like it didn't happen. We remember it as if it were a dream. A mask appearing and memory streaming to my head, starting with the supernova and ending as we wake up under the stars. And with the new deadline of our sun, we know we have no time to spare. Today we will track down Escape Pod 1, the last escape pod we have to explore. In order to do so, we will head to Brittle Hollow. Along with its moon Devil's Lantern, Brittle Hollow is a scary place. It has a black hole for its core. On top of that, Devil's Lantern is a volcanic moon that constantly bombards the surface with lava. Each eruption's projectile has enough force to knock some parts of the crust off, sending it to get eaten by the black hole. Though Brittle Hollow sounds terrifying, the Nomai on Escape Pod 1 may have had the best luck. As we fly up to Escape Pod 1, we see what should be a familiar sight by now. A big white pod with a blue light shining as a beacon to signal its location. Sitting close to the beacon, we see a Nomai recording device. The record tells us all of the Nomai survived the emergency landing. And although they can't contact the other pods, they must be intact since they are receiving signals from them. The record also mentions that Devil's Lantern was causing the Nomai a lot of problems. While reading this conversation, I spotted the name Felix. When we were on the vessel, I noticed a message from her. It made me think Felix didn't make it to an escape pod. Thankfully, she made it on escape pod 1. She seems to be the one running communications, even while she was on board the vessel. The computer on escape pod 1 amazingly reads hospitable. Apparently, the computers on escape pod 1 did not account for giant lava cannons or black holes hundreds of meters away. I guess technically it was right about being inhabitable, but the Nomai did not have an easy time. Almost immediately, the Nomai decide Devil's Lantern is much more dangerous than a black hole. They take advantage of the planet's hollow core. Using the mighty power of wood to negate the never-ending pull of the black hole, we have to watch our step as time has caused the platforms to weaken. With platforms breaking and falling behind us, we use our jetpack to follow the path. Coming to the end of the path, we find ourselves looking over a city. Not being able to fathom how someone can settle over the black hole, we can explore. Looking down, we can see the black hole. Unsurprisingly, the central room to the town is dedicated to the Eye of the Universe. Scared of losing the little information they have on the Eye, they built this room to record it. The information only consists of a visual of the Eye and how it's older than the Universe. The Nomai built this and a few surrounding buildings and decided it was time to move on. Their stay here was so temporary it was called exactly that, the Temporary City. Looking for a more stable area, the Nomai begin to build a massive walkway with gravity crystals. Traveling under the surface saves them from most of the dangers from Devil's Lantern. Once the Nomai find the stable area they are looking for, they begin constructing a full-fledged city. They call it the Hanging City. The Hanging City must lack a city planner. They didn't even add railings on the pathways for Feldsbar's sake. It's still an impressive city nonetheless. A whole faction of Nomai sleeping comfortably above a black hole. The Hanging City consists of four floors, each serving as their own district. These districts are connected by a vertical shaft whose walls have been built using gravity crystals, so we can walk up or down them as if they were floors. Bottom to top, they are the School District, the Meltwater District, the Eye Shrine District, and the Black Hole Forge District. As with the Sunless City, we will come back to some of these locations later. The first floor is where the Nomai pass on their knowledge to the young ones. This next log I'm pretty sure was added during a recent update to the game, but here we find a lesson for the kids. 
We learned in a previous episode the Nomai were headed somewhere when they received the signal from the Eye. The scroll reveals they were headed to something they call the Festival. The Nomai tribes throughout the universe meet to share the knowledge they've learned during their travels. This occurs every 10 years. On the second floor in the Meltwater District, we find a glass building attached to the side of the wall. Making our way in, we see what looks like a Nomai switch. From here, we can see what must be the Black Hole Forge, along with the Black Hole itself. We can raise and lower the forge from here, but we don't know what that really does yet. The third floor in District is the Eyeshine District. They record the knowledge here as well. The Nomai on both Ember Twin and Brittle Hollow had similar thoughts about the Eye of the Universe, asking questions like how can something in this universe be older than the universe itself? Imagine what something like that could teach us. No matter how hard we search, we can't find a way to the Black Hole Forge entrance. Although while exploring we notice something we've seen before. Dead Nomai everywhere, laying in their beds, surrounding the eye shrine, which I imagine most Nomai visit daily. Even in the school, we notice children skeletons still sitting at their desks, their teachers still standing at the front of the class. But we can't find one hint to as how they died. We've been to all three escape pods and the vessel. There was nothing at any of those locations to point us to more Nomai, or an answer to how they all died instantaneously. From here, we're not quite sure where to go. As we are searching for a way to get to the Black Hole Forge District, our sun reliably goes supernova. Sure I miss something, I head back to the Hanging City. While we are crossing the bridge to get there, Devil's Lantern strikes. The bridge we are on breaks and starts to fall into the black hole below. At this point, our jetpack is no help to us at all. To our surprise, going through a black hole is not instant death. We find ourselves floating in space. Instinctively, turning around we see what must be a white hole. This acts as the opposite of a black hole, as nothing can enter it. If we try to, we just bounce off. Turning back around to get our bearings, we spot some Nomai structure floating very close nearby. The structure is surrounded by ice. It must be very cold out here so far away from the sun. Getting closer, we see the structure has gravity pathways going around the whole exterior. Landing on it and following the path leads us inside. Once inside, we see some Nomai writing on the wall. It assures us we aren't the only being to fall into the black hole accidentally. It goes on to explain the function of this station. Apparently, this has happened to so many Nomai, they had to construct a way to get back. The Nomai call it the White Hole Station. When a Nomai falls into the black hole, they can use this to warp back to Brittle Hollow. Apparently, the Nomai had knowledge of black holes before they decided to settle down above one. If I understand correctly, a Nomai named Anana created black hole and white hole warp cores. That's the same technology we see in play here. As the planets, or white hole station, rotate, the black hole core on the white hole station aligns correctly with the white hole core on Brittle Hollow. And so, you teleport there. Just as you did as you fell into the black hole. Before we throw the switch to rotate the station to the right orientation, we notice a projection stone laying in the room. With the right tool, we can use this to get a glimpse of another planet or location. It also acts as a sort of a scroll, recording some words or conversations. Making sure to grab it, we activate the switch to the station. We make our way up to the warp pad and look up to see the planet align. Light in space bends and wobbles around you as you instantly appear around 20 kilometers away. Projection stone in hand, we try to find somewhere to plug it in. When we do, we find something more complexing than teleportation. The Nomai records show that you and the Nomai that teleport previously arrive at Brittle Hollow before they left the White Hole Station. It was approximately one hundred thousandth of a second. Even the Nomai question whether or not they can measure time that accurately. Eventually, they agree they need to test this further. 
they will make their way back to Ember Twin to the High Energy Lab. That is where we will pick up in the next episode. We learned a few things exploring the Hanging City. It seems the two factions of Nomai were able to meet up pretty early in the timeline, judging by their knowledge of the Time Anomaly and how they visited Ember Twin right after this. We also learned that even while separated, both groups of Nomai, main focus was the Eye of the Universe. We discovered the ancient technology of teleportation, and more than that, this strange time anomaly. If we really were at Brittle Hollow before we left the White Hole Station, are we really the same being that left? The Nomai must have similar questions, as their projection stone mentions that anomaly will make them reconsider all of their beliefs regarding time. As I wrap up the video, I'm going to let some kind of funny moments I had recording this run in the background. Also, I'd like to apologize for how long it took for this video to come out. The first reason is I had to rebuy the editing software. Another is they updated the game and added bits of information here and there. I didn't want to miss anything. It may take some time between videos because I'm trying to be very thorough, and the timeline of the Nomai isn't so clear. It's not something I can just Google, and looking into each and every building they construct would take too much time. But I will continue to make these videos, and maybe come back and visit some of the structures later. It's something I very much enjoy doing, so thank you for watching. This is the Lore Explorer, digging deep into the story so you don't have to.